I think the Prime Minister should be commended. This is incredibly good news. And the AUKUS agreement between these three powers, in British terms, means this is, if you like, global Britain made flesh, or perhaps made metal in this case. This shows us working with two of our traditionally strongest allies mm. collectively to help uh, contain Chinese expansionism in the Pacific. And it's also fantastic industrially, this deal, and eventually they will buy an updated version of our astute submarine, uh, is incredibly good news industrially for Barrow. Uh, so it's not just global Britain, it's also levelling up at the same time. Um, what about some of the credit being given to Boris Johnson? Because originally this this deal, this pact that, that Rishi Sunak is being able to sh stand shoulder to shoulder with President Biden and, and Prime Minister Albanese was actually, you know, choreographed and, and written up under, under Boris Johnson. Well, I don't think it, it, it's so much a battle for who gets the credit. I think Ronald Reagan said you can achieve almost anything in politics providing you don't mind who gets the credit. I, I think you can give it to both of those men. But I think it's really important in terms of Western security. I serve on the House of Commons Defence Committee and we've seen the growth of China. We've seen some of President Xi's statements uh, about Taiwan and these are very worrying. Mm. So what you're seeing here is the United States, the Great Britain and Australia collaborating politically, militarily and industrially to defend Western values and to help deter China from adventurism, which could become extremely dangerous. What do you do, Mark, with a problem like China? Because, you know, despite all this strong talk from the government and uh, the three governments involved in this, they're all desperate to do business with China as well. I, I don't think that means we never trade with China, but I think we need to do it with our eyes wide open. Remember, the Chinese Communist Party that run China. China is not a democracy, it's an autocracy. And they lock up a million Uyghurs in effectively concentration camps for having the temerity to believe in God. So that doesn't mean we should never trade with them, but it means we should do with it with our eyes wide open and understand that militarily, they have a very different view of the world from us. Yeah, and the Prime Minister describing them as being more authoritarian at home, more assertive overseas, but stopping short of calling them a true threat, calling them a challenge instead, a bit of tiptoeing, perhaps. Well, it's interesting. If you look at the number 10 press release that was issued alongside the integrated review white paper, that uses the word threat. And there was some debate in the Commons yesterday, Ian Duncan Smith, who's sanctioned by the Chinese, and I think proud of it, uh, uh, highlighted this. So, so Number 10 have been talking about a threat. It was, was it in the context of an economic threat, was the, was the phrase, which again is, is watered down from acknowledging them as, you know, perhaps more of a general threat? Well, if I lived on Taiwan, I know what word I would use. So, so I think we want, if we can, to have positive relations with China. But I think history shows we have to be clear-eyed when, when dealing with undemocratic regimes. And that brings us back to AUKUS. So this is all three nations investing collectively together in our values and in our security. It also has great industrial benefits, but ultimately it's there to keep the West and our values safe. And that's why, whether it's Rishi Sunak or Boris Johnson, Really, I think in fa it's fair to say the government should be commended for this because hopefully we will all sleep a little bit safer in our beds as a result. Uh, Mark, serious question though. Uh, when you go home to your constituency, wherever you live, um, and you are, you do sit on a Commons Defence Committee. Yes, sir. Are you worried that your television may be Chinese or that your fridge is Chinese or that you may be being listened to? I don't think I'm being listened to via my fridge. Uh, which I think is German, actually. But um, I do think there are serious issues about Huawei and about the access that they had to our 5G network. Uh, if you talk to Tom Tugendhat, uh, I think you know he could tell you some worrying things about TikTok. So I just think we need to be careful about how we use Chinese technology 
And I think we certainly need to make sure we don't deploy it in areas which are particularly sensitive and security sensitive. Um, Mark, I want to ask you about the immigration bill before we let you go. Yes. Um, it passed through its second reading, I believe, in the Commons last night yes. um, with a majority of uh, Conservatives voting for it. There were a few notable exceptions, the former Prime Minister Theresa May and a number of other former ministers and Robert Buckland this morning um, publicly saying that the UK risks looking guilty of ineffective authoritarianism. So we've got the Prime Minister criticising authoritarianism in China, but a former minister accusing this bill of authoritarianism at home? Well, the difference between us and China is we're, we're a genuine democracy. And at the end, we will have a general election within two years and people can vote at the ballot box to choose the, you know, the government that they want. They don't have that option in China. In China, even if you go online and complain about the government of the day, you disappear or you may disappear at three o'clock the following morning. And, you know, we even had an incident where Chinese diplomats were beating up people on British soil. So I think it's about time the Foreign Office stopped sort of pussyfooting around about this. And actually, we were prepared to stand up to bullying, which is what that was. Yeah.